Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I want to talk about success. I know that it means something different to everyone, and that's super awesome, but there's definitely some common threads when you look at successful people from all walks of life, from all categories between athletes and business owners and activists and all of the things. I really want to dive into that today and talk a little bit about the number one thing that you need for success, not only on Amazon, but just in life, because I've been doing some research and I find it extremely fascinating that there's some common threads among the most successful people, household names, people that you guys know and have heard of uh, mostly, um, and the success, the, the immense success that they would say the top 1%, whatever that is. And I don't know about you, but I would like a little bit more success in my life um, in different areas, of course. I mean, I haven't mastered all the things. As, as long as we're breathing, we should be learning and changing and hopefully um, improving upon what we're doing. But um, we're going to talk about these things. But first, I wanted to make sure that you guys know that we have a free Facebook group, the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. Use the code word. And this is a hint about what we're talking about today. The code word for this week is consistent. So use this code word when you want to get into the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us so that you can join other super awesome some successful people like yourselves to be able to learn from one another, have questions answered and grow your businesses. So when I say these names, I want you to think about what you know about these people. When I think of success, I think of people like Oprah or Beyonce or Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Patrick Mahomes, um, just iconic people, people that have just rose to the top and are at the top of their game and, you know, are kind of household names that people know and recognize as being, you know, they call it the goat, right? The greatest of all time, you know, Tom Brady, uh, Michael Jordan, you know, Serena Williams, these different people, of course, I'm thinking of athletes and maybe Olympians, you know, the Olympics are coming up soon and you start seeing all these athletes and all the different things. And I've done some research, not just on athletes, but on, you know, women business owners and, you know, things like that. And they have some common threads. They have been known to be quoted and interviewed and they say certain things because everybody really wants to know how, what sets yourself apart? How do you become, you know, Patrick Mahomes? How do you become Oprah? I mean, did, did this, ha how did this happen? And we all know these like iconic names, but one of the things, there's several things that are common threads. When you watch interviews with these people, you read their memoirs, you read um, quotes by them or things that they've been asked and answers to their questions. And they have all very consistent um, themes running through what they do. And one of the things is um, specifically these, these specific things. They know what they're good at. They know what they want. They want to be better at what they're good at. They love what they do and they are consistently improving their skills. They have never declared to themselves or anyone else that they have arrived and they're at the top of the mountain and this is just as good as it's going to get. They know what they want. They know what they're good at and they consistently improve their skills. So you guys know Bruno Mars. He's one of my favorites. I love, you know, he just, you know, there's always a good Bruno Mars song, right? He's got some old school flair, but then he brings his own, you know, awesomeness to the table. In an interview with, with Bruno Mars once, he said, you know, someone asked him a question. He's just like, you know, what does it feel like? You're top Grammy winner. You pretty much have all the accolades that you could possibly have in your career. And he's like, I haven't begun to scratch the surface. I am still constantly stretching myself creatively. I am constantly improving. I consistently rehearse and practice and write new material and scrap it and do it again and over and over. Same thing was said of Patrick Mahomes after he won the Super Bowl, after being in the NFL for just a few years. He wins the Super Bowl and, and they said, Well, you know, how does it feel to be so young and to be at the you know top of your game? And he kind of chuckled and was like, you ain't seen nothing yet. This isn't the top of my game. I'm just getting started. I have, he said himself, after winning a Super Bowl, 
he says, I've got a lot to learn and I'm still learning and constantly improving. Guys, these are people that we consider the best in the world. People that are that have won awards and are at the top of their game in their career. You would think that there's some arrival point that they just sit back and they relax and they're just like, hey, I'm awesome. I'm the GOAT. I'm, I'm improving. I'm doing this. Even Tom Brady, um, after winning last year's Super Bowl, said, I'm not done yet. I've got years left to improve my skills, to improve my physical fitness, to take care of myself. And I'm still in this game. See, because when you know what you want and you know what you're good at, you consistently seek to improve those skills. It's almost like an addiction. It's almost like the point where it's like, I can't help but getting better at this because I like it so much. They have all admitted to something else, consistent practice and rehearsal. Yes, practice. You know, we kind of joke about practice and things like that. We see, you know, game time Sunday, or we see Serena Williams, you know, knocking it out every single week, every time she shows up to some sort of match. Yet the hours and hours of rehearsal, we call it rehearsal, I guess, in, in the theater world, in the music world, things like that, or practice when it comes to sports. But these, all these people also have coaches. They have people helping them to learn and improve their skills and not just the skill that they're good at, not just tennis for Serena Williams, but things like taking care of her body and sleeping well and her mental health and her spiritual help and her whole well-roundedness. It's an overall consistent effort to improve. Now, I read recently about Beyonce when she was doing Coachella several years ago, and it was her first performance after she had her twins. And even the great queen, me, Beyonce, was talking about how she had to sacrifice and put herself to her own limits, to push herself beyond her limits with practice and rehearsal, six to eight hours a day of grueling workouts and dancing and all that. Why? Because she knows what she wants. She knows what she's good at. And she wants to be the best that she can be. Are those the skills that you have to have to succeed? Well, it depends on what success is to you. But I think that there's this common thread. You see the common thread amongst all these people that have been interviewed. Same thing with Oprah when she was up and coming. The other thing that I found very interesting is this inability to quit what you see throughout different people in different ways that they do things uh, these celebrities and I mean I say celebrities I I just I hate that word it's such a cliche I don't know it's just like oh a celebrity whatever anybody everybody's a celebrity and nobody is at this point you know everybody's got you know access to everything now but the reality is these these superstars these people that we all know and and know what they're known for and know what they're good at they're constantly improving their craft. When Oprah was just a reporter at one point before she had her own show, she did not give up. When people told her she'd never be anything, she was never going to be a good reporter. She wasn't good at reporting at all. She might as well go take a desk job somewhere because this is never going to be for her. Instead of giving up, she dug her heels in and said, this is what I want. This is what I'm good at. And I'm going to get better. If I'm not good enough now, I'll be good enough later. And that's the thing is that a lot of people think that it's for the world to see. But what a lot of these people share is that they want to be better for themselves. They are constantly working on themselves to be a better version of themselves. They work on and consistently improve their craft. They practice consistently. You know, with the great internet these days, you can kind of look up people's like daily routines. You can even look up what they eat and what they do. I mean, these things are reported everywhere, especially if somebody's a superstar, you can be like, okay, what are, what are these people? What are their investments? I mean, like Wikipedia can give you pretty much any information on any people. And then you can, you know, continue to dig on, which is what I did on some of these. Cause I found it fascinating to see how elite people, right? How people that are super successful at what they do and they've really dialed into that. What do they 
do? How do they live their day to day, right? You hear these on podcasts a lot. What does your typical day look like? And I don't say that mockingly. I say that because people want to know, like, if you're Patrick Mahomes, how do you live every day? What do you do? They consistently keep and manage their time and they practice their craft. They don't try to do all the things, everything. They don't want to be good at all. Oh, you know, I, I want to be good at football and baseball and golf and this and that. It's literally like this, stay in your lane almost. They stay in their lane and they do what they're good at until they're really good at that. They continue practicing that, learning, tweaking, trying new things within their skill. And then they add other things. So my question to you is, what do you want to be successful with? Do you want to be successful? What is success to you? Is that building a seven-figure business? Is that building a five-figure business? Is it quitting your job? Is it being able to retire comfortably? What is it that you want? You want to build better bundles? Do you want to get better at running your business or being better at research? See, I'm going to challenge you to give, to take just a really honest assessment of where you are right now. What does your routine look like? Do you even have a routine? That's a good question. I'll be honest. I am not, I have never been a huge routine fan. I'm kind of spontaneous. I like to do things, you know, kind of in the moment and just, I get everything done, but it's some, somewhat a little bit scattered. Some of it's based on feelings. Some of it's based on uh, what I absolutely have to do in the moment. I'm a self-proclaimed last minute Lucy. I do best under pressure. You know, I'm just giving you things about me, but over time, as I've started to consistently hone my skills of, you know, e-commerce and research and everything else, I've realized that routine is present. I just didn't realize the how of it. I didn't realize I had a specific routine and a way that I was conducting business. And so when I took a look at that, people say, well, what is it? You know, I've been on many podcast interviews lately, and these are questions that come up a lot. And it's forced me to really contemplate these types of things. Well, what, you know, what is it look like to have a successful business? How do you get there? All consistent steps. And I joke and I say that like I'm chuckling, but actually, yeah, I wrote a book about it. Dream big, step small. Why? Because that's really how simple it is. Now, I'm not saying it's easy and everyone can just go and do all this overnight, whatever. It's small, consistent steps. And you have to decide, ask what you actually want. How are you going to move towards something if you don't know exactly what you're moving towards? You're just floating around with the wind? No, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I didn't want. You can start there even. That's a one stepping stone. Start where you, what you don't want. Because when our house foreclosed on us, because we didn't have options, because we didn't have any finances, because of things that we could not control, like my husband's injury, that, that didn't, we didn't make that happen. That happened to us. So what were you going to do about it? Well, I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want someone else to have control over our income and our finances ever again. I didn't want to be in a position stuck, helpless, hopeless, not wanting that. So knowing what you don't want, that's a really good starting point. You don't want to go to your nine to five again. You don't want to spend eight to 10 hours a day working for someone else, lining their pockets with money while your family is struggling. Maybe that's something you don't want, but you've got to take that honest assessment of where you are right now in order to close that gap. You got to close that gap between this is what I really want. And this is what I'm moving towards. And it can be something small first. Maybe, you know, it's like, oh, I want a million dollar business. Okay. Take it down a notch. Step small, step smaller to say, okay, how about getting to your first $10,000? Maybe it's to your first six-figure month on or in another business, whatever it is. Think about those things. And then what are you going to do? What are you doing now? What are you doing consistently to work towards what you want? Do you have a routine at all? 
I were to stop right now, and I am stopping right now to ask you this question, what would your answer be? And it's okay. I'm not here to shame you. I'm not here to guilt you. I'm here to bring awareness to what might be blocking you from getting the thing that you want the most, but that success that you want for you to sit back and go, yeah, this is what I've been wanting. Ask you, what do you do consistently, dare I say daily, to get closer to what you want. You're in a perfect world. If you guys don't know what my in a perfect world is, go buy Dream Big, Step Small uh, on the website, mommyincome.com or um, listen to it on Audible or get it on Amazon. It gives you a definition and, and how to create your in a perfect world. So that's what you want, your big goal, your big dream, your big desire, um, your in a perfect world if you could create that yourself. So go back and listen to that. I think in episode maybe 145 too, it talks about that. Um, you can go back and listen to your in a perfect world or look up uh, in the show notes or whatever, you know, how to create your in a perfect world because all that hinges on, you got to know what you want, but what are you doing every day to get closer to your in a perfect world? Every day, consistently. Because going back to people like Patrick Mahomes and Oprah and Beyonce and Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos and all these, you know, household names and people that have built empires, they had great clarity about where they wanted to go. They knew, maybe not all the big details and everything else, but they knew they wanted to be better than where they were then. So that's all you have to know. All you have to know is it you want to improve upon where you're at right now. We can take something simple. Like um, I just started taking guitar lessons. I decided that I love music. I've always loved music. My son plays guitar and I've always wanted to learn to play guitar. So I know that where I'm at right now, the honest assessment is I know nothing. (laughs) That's pretty easy to figure out, right? And I know where I wanna go. I want to be able to hold my own, play a few, you know, three chords in the truth, right? I want to be able to just, for to my own entertainment, just to be able to play some songs. It's very peaceful and relaxing to me. I like to sing. I like to, so whether anyone ever hears me or not, I know what I want. I also know where I'm at. I'm a complete newbie beginner. I don't know a thing. So I know what I have to do to improve. I have to learn and I have to practice consistently. A practice and consistent practice can be hit or miss, right? It could be a day here, two days next week, maybe. But how you practice is going to be what your outcome is going to look like. What you get put in is what you're going to get out. So let me ask you this. Where's your consistency level? Where's your commitment level? So if you want to, let's put this back in the business, for example, if you want to become a better, better bundler, if you want to become better at research so that you can launch products on Amazon that are going to sell consistently, how committed to that are you? If I look at the schedule for this week, maybe your calendar even, where on your calendar does it say practice research? research X, Y, Z, practicing. Because guess what? If you're new at this, you're not going to be good at it. Have all figured out right now. You're new. I don't have guitar all figured out right now. I barely know a thing. And I'm okay with that because I know I want to get better. And I also know it's on my calendar to practice every day because I'm committed to it because I have goals. The goals are small, but they're still goals. You've got to be working towards something. Otherwise, you won't prioritize it. You won't make time for it. Instead, you'll make excuses. You can't expect to see results that you don't work for. I know this is tough to hear. I'm talking to myself too, you guys. I do. I don't ever talk to you about things that I don't contemplate myself and practice myself. I struggle too. I struggle to stay consistent at certain things, especially things that I don't necessarily enjoy. Because let's be real. It's not necessarily enjoyable to suck at something. 
nothing. You're not going to be good. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to want to throw your computer out the window. I sometimes want to toss this guitar when my fingers hurt so bad and I don't want to push on that string one more time. Yet that's the only way to break through to improvement. It's the yucky stuff in the beginning. It's the consistency of, okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm a beginner. I'm new at this. But the only way to stop becoming a beginner is to practice and to get better at doing it. So you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. Let me ask you this. If you have kids and they learn to walk as babies, maybe around 12 months or so. I know if you're mine, my kids were like a freak of nature. My son started walking at eight and a half months. It was so wrong. He was like walking under tables and it was just so weird to see this tiny little kid like toddling around. And he pretty much went from crawling to running. He did kind of skipped walking altogether. But seriously though, like (laughs) thinking about that, like when he was learning to walk or my kids were learning to walk and they took a few steps, what do we do? We're like, yay, yay. We get our videos out. We're like, just take a step to mama. Come on. You just one little step and they're wobbling and falling over and they bounce down on that diaper. And then they kind of get back up and we help them up and we help them take that next step. You ever get mad and frustrated at them? Cause they're like, how dare you not be able to walk already? get yourself up and start walking. No, we don't do that. Instead, we're like, good job. Every step, every baby step is still a step. And we encourage them and we help them and we give them things to lean on and we give them tables to hold on to, or we extend our hand to help them walk. We don't ridicule them or get mad at them or beat her or or, or like, you know, they don't even beat themselves up about being a beginner. They don't know any better. They're just like, okay, I'm going to keep trying this walking thing. Same thing for if you're a beginner and you're starting something. If you're new to Amazon, if you're new to research, if you're new to bundling, if you're new to opening wholesale accounts and all this stuff is just overwhelming and frustrating, congratulations. You're in the game. You're no longer on the sideline. You're in the game. And the problem with being in the game is that now something's required of you. You're expected to show up and to do something, even if you're a beginner. Congratulations, you haven't quit. You're giving yourself the ability to be a beginner, to do the hard stuff, to fall on your behind and then get up again. Have people in your corner cheering you on. Mommy Income Facebook group, come in there. Post your wins, post your excitedness, post that you sold your first bundle or the fact that you just started to begin with. What does your commitment look like? How are you going to get past the beginner stage? Maybe your first goal is to be like, I'm no longer a beginner. I sent in my first box or I sent in my first bundle and it's there. Because you can't take of something that you haven't done yet. You can't improve upon something if you don't put something out there. So all of you overthinkers, all of you guys that are consistently like, oh, I'm going to start bundling. I'm going to start bundling. I'm going to start doing this. Put something out there, even if it's terrible, because you can't improve upon something that you don't do. So what is the success? Like, what do you need to succeed on Amazon, to succeed on life, to succeed on anything that you want to do? First of all, permission to be a beginner, permission to be bad in the beginning. Why? Because you don't know any better. And guess what? That's perfectly acceptable. Perfectly acceptable for you to say, yes, I am still a beginner. So I have permission to mess up, to make mistakes, to not get it right the first and second time. But you have to be committed and you have to be consistent. You can't expect to see things. Now, I'm not expecting you to do six hours of rehearsal like Beyonce does for Coachella or, you know, a four hour workout routine, you know, constantly doing that. But What about 15 minutes a day? What about 15 minutes a day? Now, maybe some of you guys have heard this story, maybe not, but I'm going to tell it again, just so that you realize that 15 minutes a day makes a difference if you're consistent. So not too long ago, maybe a year or so ago, a couple of years, my family's been playing cornhole for a long time and they love to play and I am terrible at sports, like so bad at sports. I struck out in T-ball, you guys, when I was like five, T-ball. 
like you can't even hit the ball off the tee that's like right in front of your face. <laughs> Mercy me and let me go to like first base, but I was so bad. And after that, I just didn't play sports. I'm like, nope, I'm bad at sports. I'm not going to play and everything else. So when my family started taking up cornhole as like a nice backyard barbecue, you know, barbecue backyard kind of game, um, everybody, you know, like I didn't play. I was like, no, I'm bad at sports. You don't want me on your team. I'm not playing, you know, whatever. And even I tried it and guys, I was so bad. Uh, I literally, uh, you know, like could not hit the broad side of a barn with that bean bag, throwing that in that little tiny hole. I was like, no, nope, this is not for me. But the truth was that I really wanted to play. I didn't want to spend my life on a sideline. I am not a sideline girl. Just in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a big competitor. I don't love to compete necessarily, especially with other people. I, I compete against myself. I love to challenge myself and to compete against my own self, but to be on a team, that's part of the whole T-ball thing that I've carried with me, this self-imposed label of being terrible at anything athletic. Um, I didn't want to break. I don't want to be the one that the anchor that holds the team down. I don't want to be the one that makes ever the whole ship sink because I'm the bad one. So I decided I wasn't going to play on any team sports. I didn't want anything to do with that. And I'm not really super competitive by nature. So I thought, oh my gosh, if I play this, I'm going to be on somebody's team and I'm going to be the bad one. And they're not going to want to play with me because I'm going to make them look bad. I mean, we're all going to lose because of me. So but I, I, I just didn't like sitting there watching everyone play. I'm like, that looks like fun, but I'm not good at it. So I was like, okay, so what if I'm bad in the beginning? The only way to get better at something is to practice. And so what did I do? I practiced. I decided that I wasn't, I didn't want to be bad anymore. So I looked at YouTube. I learned a few fundamentals of like, how do I actually do this? Like, what is the actual steps of physically throwing this bag almost 30 feet? You know, and so I learned, I watched some videos and I learned some stuff and I just committed to throwing a hundred bags a day, regardless of how bad it was. It didn't matter who, what, when, where, if it was not pouring rain, I was going to throw cornhole bags hundred a day. That's it. I just thought I'll eventually get better. And you know how long it took about 15 minutes, literally 15 minutes a day. I documented my progress. How many of those bags did I get on or in and how, how was I improving? I mean, because you can practice over and over, but if you practice bad, you're going to get bad results for a while. So you have to learn how to practice well, learn what you're doing right and wrong. How do you know that? Document it, write it down. What are the results that you're seeing? So what did I do? I just took a little index card that eventually ended up as a spreadsheet. And I threw eight bags on one side, eight bags on the other. And how many did I get on and in? And in the beginning, you guys, it was so bad. It was a good thing no one was watching because it was embarrassing even for myself. I was like, oh my gosh. I like literally zero out of eight, many, many times. And then it started to be one out of eight, two out of eight, three out of eight slowly with 15 minutes a day of practice, I got better. But how would I have known if I got better if I wasn't really calculating it? Because small changes add up. The small changes add up. How do you know? How would I know if I wasn't documenting my practice, if I was even getting better? It would look like a lot of frustration because zero out of eight and then moving to one out of eight is improvement. It doesn't have to be landsliding improvement. We're not breaking world records here. But how do you know if you're getting better, if you're not documenting what you're doing and then trying to make small changes? That's what I challenge you to do. You think you're bad at research? You think you can't come up with product ideas? Do you struggle to get started on a task? I challenge you to take a 15 minute hustle, let's we'll call it the 15 minute hustle challenge. So whatever you think that you're just really frustrated with, and you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you beat your head against the wall on these different things, take the 15 minute hustle challenge. 15 minutes a day, do that thing consistently every day. It's only 15 minutes. Some people spend more than that on the toilet. Let's be honest. Some people spend way more time than that scrolling, flipping channels, just doing whatever. And I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm saying 15 minutes is not a lot of time. And what if I told you that in 30 days, 
you could increase your output. You can increase your success rate by 25% in 30 days. If you've practiced for 15 minutes a day, does that seem overwhelming to you? It shouldn't 15 minutes a day. So what is it that you want to improve upon? What is it that you want to have success with? And success can just be hitting small milestones. Y'all, I just didn't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be dead last. I didn't want to be the one everyone's like, oh, I guess we have to pick her. She's the only one to play. I mean, you guys, I was so bad at Cornhole, but I had thrown my bag on someone else's board when we were playing this tournament. God knows why I even entered that. I don't know. It was so embarrassing. But the reality is, once you get those bad moments out of the way, you're probably never going to be that bad again. So that's the good news. You can't be as bad as you are in the beginning. That first moment, it's already over. I've already pretty much reached the top embarrassment that I could probably reach when it came to cornhole. So I thought, oh, there's nowhere to go up but up from here. But my success really isn't to be on ESPN and to be some competitor. My goal was just to not be terrible. How about just mediocre? I'm okay with just being okay just having some fun and realize how much I love doing this in cornhole. But it's the same thing with my business. When there's something I feel like I'm not good at or I'm new at, or I'm just learning how to do, and it's just really frustrating, 15 minutes a day is all it takes. And guess what? After you set that timer, or you do that thing for 15 minutes, that thing that you're practicing, the thing that you feel bad at, you can be done. That's the beauty of a 15 minute hustle. Just be like, okay, I'm going to get this started. And for 15 minutes, this is what I'm going to work on. And after that, I'm done because I can't handle anymore because it's frustrating. Honestly, when I was first few weeks of practicing cornhole, that 15 minutes wasn't physically grueling. It was mentally embarrassing. It was like, I kept telling myself, you're so bad. This is so bad. But that also built up this frustration of like, but I don't have to be. I'm here practicing. I'm improving. I'm doing the best that I can do for myself right now. So if you're struggling with something in business, you're, you're just having a hard time finding products or you're constantly down the research rabbit hole and you feel like you don't know what you're doing, give yourself a 15 minute hustle challenge. Put it on your calendar at a specific day and time. It doesn't have to be the same time every day, just daily. Take the challenge. Document what you do and what you're trying to improve upon. What is one stat that you can or a piece of data that you can record and say, okay, I want to get better at this. I want to get faster at this. I want to get more efficient at this. I only want to have two tabs open at a time. And this is how I'm going to stay focused. Because honestly, people even make excuses of, I don't have time. Y'all have 15 minutes. I don't care who you are. You have 15 minutes. And if you don't have time, you can make time. You're right. We all don't really have time, right? There's so many things we're juggling. I mean, you guys probably have more than you're juggling than me, but I have three kids and a husband and two businesses and two different brands and, you know, all these different things that I'm doing constantly, but I make time for what I want to make time for. What's important to me. You got to make it non-negotiable. Do you have something that you really want? Make those 15 minutes non-negotiable. Even if that's your 15 minute walk every night, because you just need 15 minutes to yourself. Get non-negotiable. Let your family, your friends, yourself know that this is your 15 minutes and you're not sacrificing it for everyone. Because guess what? I'm just, you're an awesome person. I know you are, but no one's going to miss you for 15 minutes. No one. Hell, even my crazy kids and my newborn baby, back in the day when I first started my business, I could grab 15 minutes to grow my business. I could have 15 minutes where I could ship a couple of products, write a couple of product descriptions, take a few pictures, and no one missed me. So what is it that you want? What are you going to do to fill the gap between what you really want and where you're at right now? challenge you to take a 15 minute hustle challenge, figure out that one thing, one thing, not all the things, not everything. What's one thing that you want to improve on? 
you want to get better at? What is going to make your business go, be better, be faster, make more money? What is the one skill that you can improve upon in the next 30 days? Give yourself a 15 minute hustle challenge. Y'all, I don't care that it's the middle of the summer. I don't care that we're all busy doing all these fun things and now COVID is subsiding and we're getting back to real life, whatever that means. And we have outings and gatherings and weddings and things that we haven't had in the past 18 months. What are you going to do to consistently practice to get closer to where you want to be? Take the 15 minute hustle challenge. Take one piece of data that you want to track for that 30 days. Give it 15 minutes a day and see where you are in 30 days. Because that time's gonna pass regardless. And give yourself some grace because sometimes we are super busy and we're just not gonna get to it that day. But commit to at least five days a week. We all have five days a week where we can grab 15 minutes. I have done it daily now. And I thought at the beginning of this year, I started a new habit. And it was something I'd been wanting to do for a really long time, but I hadn't made time for it. I thought to myself, I cannot carve out this 30 minutes a day to do this thing. I wanted to journal first thing in the morning. I wanted to read my Bible and have my devotions and do a specific journal exercise every single morning before I started work, before everyone wanted any piece of my time. I wanted to give my time to myself. And so I did that at the beginning of January. It is now the end of June and every day, minus a few here and there traveling, stuff like that, like literally a few, probably like three times I've missed it. Every day, I just made it non-negotiable. After I get ready in the morning, I sit down and I tell everybody, this is my time. Do not talk to me. My phone is off. Everything's up. No one has access to me for this 30 minutes that I've given myself. And I can't tell you how much better I feel emotionally and spiritually and connected with my day and what I want to do and the mindset that I want to have because I'm intentional. I'm consistent. So what is it that you're going to be intentional and consistent about? What do you want to improve upon? Take the 15 minute hustle challenge. If you don't know fully about doing a 15 minute hustle, it really is setting a timer and doing something for 15 minutes being intentional about it, writing it down, taking an assessment, just do it and see how you are in 30 days. The reason I say 30 days is because studies and statistics have shown that it takes 21 days to build a habit, but 30 days, it just becomes so natural to you that you almost stop thinking about it and you just do it naturally. Now, as part of my regular routine, I have this 30 minutes in the morning regardless of what time I have to get up or regardless of where I'm going or what I'm doing, I make time for this because it's important to me. And I have also seen the benefits that come along with being consistent. I know some of this is tough, this tough love, but at the same time, it's love. I know that there's things that you want to accomplish that you haven't got to yet. Things that you're making excuses about, things that you want to improve upon that you're frustrated about. This is your chance to take a 15 minute hustle and be consistent at it. And not so that you can guilt and shame yourself into it, but because this is what you really want. No one's forcing you. Do you want improvements or not? If you want to be improvements, 15 minutes a day can literally change your life. So I wanted to remind you about the workshop that's coming up in August. I'm so excited to see everyone in person. I've been talking about this for weeks. Um, the, the seats are going fast. People are getting really excited to meet up in Las Vegas and go to the workshop and learn bundling hands on. So I want to make sure that you guys save your seat before they're all sold out um, because the next ones aren't going to be probably until 2022 in January. So check that page out as well, but mommyincome.com slash workshop. Workshop 50 is your coupon code. Uh, if you want to save a few bucks there, I would love to be able to meet you and help you improve your bundling skills so that you can get on with your real life. Because yeah, business is great and business gives us income and income gives us options, but it's not just life. The better you're at, the better you the better you are at improving your bundles, the more efficient you can run your business, the faster you can make your money, the easier it becomes. So practice, practice, practice. That's part of what the workshop is. We literally practice building bundles together. 
So you can get your questions answered in the moment and not when you're stuck in research going, is this the right thing? Are these the right components? I don't know what to do here. No, it's just hands-on in the moment training. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. Guys, just take this to heart. Think about it. Think about how you want to improve your life and what you want to do. Um, with your business, with your life, with anything. Even if you want to learn a new skill, 15 minutes a day is all it takes. Be intentional, be consistent, practice, practice well. I know you can be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files. Thank you for supporting me and Mommy Income. And if you're so inclined and you really like these episodes, please leave a review on iTunes, leave a review wherever you can leave review. Let people know that this podcast is awesome and that you're always listening. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear the next episode. And we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.